So today let's continue building my spot welder from a microwave of a transformer. And of course now I have to look for some wire, a very thick one, for the secondary, which is probably going to have about three or four turns. But of course the wire has to be super super thick. And of course you can use something like welder cables or jump starter cables for a car or something like this. But of course you have to use proper ones, not the cheap Chinese ones, which are just a lot of rubber and about three copper hairs in it. Or maybe some cable from a scrapped car going from the battery to the starter or something like this. But I decided to try what I have and I have a lot of those degaussing coils from CRT televisions and monitors. It's basically a loop of a wire and if you cut it you basically see a lot of thin wires in it. Those degaussing coils were used to demagnetize the CRT screen of a monitor or television. And it has about 100 turns but you can basically cut the loop and use it as one thick cable. Basically all the strands in parallel instead of in series. But of course the disadvantage is that the wires have lacquer on it, so at the end of it you have to get rid of the lacquer. So it's a bit annoying, but because I have a lot of those super thick degaussing coils from old CRT televisions, I decided to try those. And those red ones are probably from the 80s and they are much thicker than the later ones. And as you can see it has a double insulation on it. This transparent one and also this red one. But of course the problem is that this isolation takes a lot of space in the transformer window. And of course for efficiency you want to put as much copper as possible in it and you don't want to waste space in the window by this thick rubber isolation. So I could remove this isolation and wrap it in a thinner Kepton tape probably. Well, of course it has a lacquer on it, so theoretically I could put it in it without any further isolation, but for a better feeling I will probably wrap it in this. It's a Kepton tape, or actually it's knockoff Koptan tape from eBay. So let's cut those degaussing coils. They were around a CRT screen and they were briefly connected to mains via a PTC thermistor, which heated up and gradually increased its resistance. So basically the AC voltage in the coil went gradually down. So the AC magnetic field basically faded out and demagnetized the screen. But now of course they are going to be used for something completely different. This was the connection going to it. So let's remove the thick isolation from it. It's wrapped like this and there is also this isolation on it. That's a decent cross section of copper. I will use T in parallel and let's wrap it in a Kepton tape and wind it on it. Well, it has a lacquer on it so maybe the Kepton tape is not necessary and now I tried to fit four turns of two degaussing coils together. It could work. I tried to wrap it all in a Kepton tape. Like this basically. I keep it kind of oval shaped, not circular. To fit better into the transformer. And sometimes it's easier to start wiring it from the center of it. And now it's four turns on it with the Kepton tape. It should work. The Kepton tape is way more space efficient than rubber isolation. But now of course the biggest problem is the lacquer on the wires. I have to somehow remove it. So I removed the lacquer from it using scissors of course, my universal tool and I put some solder on it and I will put those random copper pieces. It's something plated copper. I will put them on it like this and make some contacts for the spot welding. And of course I should have probably used screws to connect this, but anyway. So I basically gave it those copper pieces with some tips on them for spot welding. But let's also try some other experiments. <laughs> 
and the short circuit current on the primary side is about 24 amps. But of course when it's not shorted it should be less because the spot weld has a certain resistance. Now let's make the electrode a bit more pointy. Of course it doesn't have to be a sharp point because it would wear off quickly anyway. It's more like a rounded tip. Now let's test it on those metal sheets. Can I spot weld it together? And it's spot welded. A bit better this time. Now it's much stronger. This was way better. You have to practice the technique. And of course the tips of it have to be aligned. Of course now let's do it such a way that you can actually see it. Nice. Bloody hell. And as you can see it occasionally trips the circuit breaker and it especially happens because I'm using this plug to turn it on and off. It would be better to use some foot switch to have both hands free and not to have problems with bounding contacts. Because when I'm using the plug to power it, it can make contact and break contact several times in a row. When you make contact and lose contact a couple times very quickly, it very often trips the breaker. And at such a high current, which is also partially inductive, it's also possible that the contacts draw an arc and it may even jump to another terminal in the socket. So we have to give it a switch, ideally a foot switch with quite a high current rating. But it's spot welded very nicely. Now let's try to see the output voltage and how much does it drop during the spot welding. Now the open circuit voltage, nearly 4 volts. And when it's spot welding the voltage is... About 0.7 volts. But of course it fluctuated about from 0.6 volts to about 1 volt. The resistance of the spot weld is not constant. And the lower the resistance, the lower the voltage drop on the spot weld. And of course as the metal heats up, its resistance goes up. But when it melts, the electrodes get closer to each other so the resistance goes back down. And of course the voltage of the spot weld is the resistance times the current through it and the power that goes into the spot weld is the voltage times the current. And of course the more you load the transformer, the more the output voltage drops. When it's open a circuit and the current is zero, the voltage is about 4 volts and the more you load it, the more the voltage goes down and at some point it gets to zero. So basically at maximum voltage you have no current and at maximum current you have no voltage. And of course I can't measure the secondary current because my clamp meter goes up to just 100 amps. But let's try to make a wild guesstimate what the short circuit current on the secondary side could be. When the transformer is not loaded the magnetizing current is about 4 amps but when it's loaded the primary current is about 24 amps and of course it causes some voltage drop on the resistance of the primary end, so the primary voltage effectively drops by about 27 volts during the short circuit current. At about 200 volts the magnetizing current is still almost 2 amps. So let's say the primary current is about 24 amps but let's subtract let's say 2 amps for the magnetizing current 
and you're left with about 22 amps of the primary current. And the current transforms in the opposite ratio than the voltage. And I guess the primary is about 220 turns, so let's multiply the current by 220 turns and divided by 4 turns on the secondary end. The secondary current comes out as about 1200 amps. And for example, when the voltage at the output drops to 1 volt, the current should be about 900 amps, given that the voltage drops linearly. Of course, it doesn't have to be exactly linear, because the core of the transformer and the magnetic shunts are not linear, they may saturate. So this may not be exactly linear, but let's assume it's linear. And at 1 volt, 900 amps, the power going into the spot weld is the voltage times the current, and this is 1 volt times 900 amps, and this is 900 watts. And the power is represented by the area under this, under this rectangle. But of course this is not optimized. The transformer is not matched to the impedance or resistance of the spot weld. If the voltage drops linearly under the load, you get the maximum power from it when the voltage drops to half of it and also you get half of the maximum current. So the power of it is represented by this area and you get 2 volts times 600 amps and this is 1200 watts. This is the maximum power you can get from the transformer. And of course for maximum efficiency, for minimum losses in the transformer, you want the secondary voltage to drop just a little bit, but for maximum output power, you want it to drop to one half of it. The maximum power you can get from it is here, when the voltage drops to one half of it and you get 1200 watts of power going into the spot weld. In both directions, from this point, the power is lower. For example here, it's just 900 watts and here it's also 900 watts. But with this spot weld, it was somewhere in this region. So the power going into the spot weld was something from about 600 something watts to 900 watts. If you put the power on the vertical axis and the voltage and the current on the horizontal axis, it looks like this, and here's the peak power you can get from it. But in this case it's working in this region, or this region on this picture. But of course it depends on what you're spot welding. Some materials can have higher resistance and it would get it into this point. But in this case the resistance is too low, so it basically overloads it and the voltage falls too low. It drops too much under the load. Of course I could get the voltage higher by removing those magnetic shunts. If I removed them, the voltage wouldn't drop that much, but also the secondary current and the primary current would be too high and it would trip my circuit breaker. When it's working in this region, the current is about 20 amps on the primary side and my circuit breaker is the limiting factor. To optimize it for this kind of material or spot weld, I would have to remove some turns. I would have to use less turns on the secondary, probably two or three. Less turns and even thicker wire. But of course there are also different techniques of spot welding. For example spot welding it from one side, basically both electrodes from this side and then the current travels through much longer path in the material. So it probably has a higher resistance and you need more voltage and let's try this. And it also makes a spot weld. But it seems to be a bit less strong. It probably requires more power or... It seems that most of the current travels through just this layer, not this one. Let's give it one more try. Oh, it seems stronger. Now let's try to space the electrodes a bit more. Nice. 
and now it's properly welded. And what happens to the voltage? About 1.2 volts and then 1.6 volts. Now the voltage drop is about 1.5 volts, so it's working roughly in this place or in this place. And it puts about 1100 watts into the spot weld. But even with the electrodes quite far from each other, the voltage still drops under one half of the open circuit voltage. So it would be better to have about three turns on it, I guess, instead of four turns. And the resistance is the voltage divided by the current and, with the electrodes far from each other, the resistance seems to be about two milliohms and, with the electrodes from opposite sides, the resistance is even lower, about 600 microohms. And this is basically the electrodes going from one side of it and touching two layers of metal and, here it's basically the electrodes going against each other. So the conclusion is that it works, but it's not optimized. The secondary probably has too many turns, so it has a too high voltage, but a too low current capability. So the voltage drops too much when it's loaded. And if somebody is interested, I measured the windings in the transformer and the primary was, and it actually still is, a copper winding with about 1.1 mm diameter and about 220 turns. And the original high voltage secondary was about 0.42 mm diameter, also copper. And the auxiliary winding was 3 turns. Now it reaches the maximum power at 2 volts, 600 amps and two volts divided by 600 amps is 3.3 milliohms. So now it's optimized for 3.3 milliohms resistance of a spot weld, which is higher than the actual spot weld resistance I have. Three turns would be probably better. If I use three turns it would be about three volts and the current changes in the opposite ratio so it would be about 1600 amps. And the peak power point happens at half the voltage, half the current, and it would be optimized for about 1.8 milliohms resistance of the spot weld. And two turns would optimize it for about 0.8 milliohms or 800 microohms spot weld. So this is Diagno Wild, and see you in my next videos, and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And of course you can also become my patron to support my channel and get early videos. And of course in the next episode I will try to give it a food switch to be able to power it with my hands free instead of powering it by just plugging it in. I will also try to rewind it to three turns to match it better to the impedance of a typical spot weld. And I will give it probably some mount or handles to make it more convenient to use.